Right, so let's see what that is. That's not code A. These are the types of tools that I was mentioning um, earlier. And a lot of times it is very similar to what you would use in surgery. And if you're going to install strain gauges, you really got to get yourself a good pair of tweezers. Uh, whether you buy them from us, KTM, or you buy them somewhere else, doesn't matter. But make sure you get a good set and keep them only for strain gauging because you don't want to get contamination on these and then turn around and get contamination on the strain gauges. That would be a problem. Uh, we typically use uh, dental picks. A lot of times these are used for very fine wiring. Like if you look inside of a transducer that you might have in your lab, you'll see some very fine wiring and a lot of times you use these to kind of route the wiring. But I got a couple of uh, tweezers, uh, some surgical shears. Uh, these are used so that you can trim wires uh, to the right length. Um, occasionally we'll use them for trimming terminals, but uh, most of the time it's for like cutting wires. And then this is a 4-H drafting pencil. We'll use this to burnish a line on the aluminum. So all that being said, why don't I get started? And the first thing I'm going to do is open up this beam. And on this beam, uh, this is one that we use in a standard workshop. It's got a set of tick marks that one are about a quarter of an inch away from the end. That's usually where we apply weight. Uh, we've got another set here in the middle. And for this exercise, I'm not going to use it. And then I got another set here at this end that's about two inches away. And that's where I'll put the strain gauge. Um, let me create a little bit more room. This must be an old paper. I thought it would have a whole bunch of stuff about North Korea and South Korea. All right, so what I'm going to do first is degrease it. And these steps are outlined uh, behind you. And the, one of the things that I like to do is spray this into a gauze pad like that. Because if you spray it directly on the surface, if you spray it directly on the surface, it has a tendency to evaporate very quickly. So um, once you spray it into a gauze pad, then just take it and kind of wipe it off. And I just wipe off the whole area. And if this were a real part, I like to start kind of big and then work my way down small. Even though the gauge is very small, you kind of start big and kind of work your way down. The next step is to abrade it. And it's really for two purposes. Uh, first, you're trying to lift off any contamination that's on the surface. And second, and probably more important, you're trying to give it a uniform texture. Uh, some customers will think that if a part is very shiny, that's good but it's actually not. You want texture. So like when you look at something and it reflects the light back, like a shiny bumper on an old car, for example, uh, things don't stick as well. You want it to be kind of dull. So like if you're putting strain gauges on stainless steel, for example, it can be very difficult to get the gauges to stick to it because the surface is hard and oftentimes it's very, very smooth. So what we want to do is add a little bit of texture to it. Thank you. And in order to do that, I'll just take a little piece of, uh, this is a uh, silicon carbide sandpaper. It's basically wet dry sandpaper. And I'll just take a piece of it and just sand a little bit back and forth. Not really that easy. And once you get done with that one, we also typically uh, want to go a little bit finer than that. So I'll take this one, and now what I'm going to do is combine it with a step. I'll take a piece of tape off. I'm going to take a so this will be a I think this is 400 grit silicon carbide paper that'll produce a little bit better surface finish. I'm going to do one more pass with 220. And I'm going to use this red tip bottle, which is a conditioner. This is a very mild phosphoric acid. Let's see if I can get the seal off of it. Let me have that little pick. I don't want a knife. Sometimes these things are tricky to get off. Thank you. 
So I'll just take a few drops of this, put it on the area like that. More paper. And just sand it back and forth for two strokes. Now once you've done that, you'll notice that it starts to pick up some contamination off the surface. You have a little bit from the paper. So you want to take a gauze pad and then dry it up. And this is an important part of this. You don't want to wipe back and forth. You don't want to take it like this and just wipe back and forth because you're just moving things around. So you want to try to keep a clean side down against it. So what I'll do is start here and push it out like that and then take it and refold it to a clean side, start here and then go that way. And I'll just kind of wipe off the underside too. So now what I'm going to do is the very same thing with this finer grit paper. Again, a little bit more of the conditioner, which is the mild phosphoric acid. A few drops of it. Close it up. And then take it, usually about 10 or 12 strokes back and forth is enough. Take that, throw it away. And then take another gauze pad. And wipe it, fold it around to a clean side, and then wipe it going the other way. Now we're at a point, if you look up on the uh, screen, normally where we would measure the thickness of the beam. So at this point, normally in a class that we teach, we'd measure the thickness, but we have a limited amount of time and I'll try to keep going. Uh, so what I'm going to do next is burnish the alignment mark, and I'll show you how I'll do that. If you look kind of closely, there's these little tick marks on the side of this beam. And what I'm going to do is transfer them up to the top surface like this. And what that's going to allow me to do is take this uh, scale that I've got and use it as a straight edge. Thank you. I'll just lay it over top like this. And try to hold the pencil more straight up and down. So you don't break it. Just like that. Now this is the, the tricky part of this, is that all the black stuff that you see, I'm going to try to get that removed. That pencil is hard enough that this aluminum, when I go back and forth across it, will kind of flatten out some of, these, some of the texture and you'll be able to see a line. I do need some cotton tip applicators, like uh, men, like uh, Q-tips. Do you have any of those? The, oh, I'm sure you have some of them. We're almost ready to put the gauge on. Um, what I want to do next is to scrub this area. Uh, if you look on the, the overhead, uh, the projector, we're down to burnishing the alignment mark. While he's getting that, I'm also going to put on a load line. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to use a, a dental pick. I'll use another scale as a straight edge. That's just indicating a line at where we'll put the load. And see, when you got a cantilever beam that's fixed here and it's loaded here, the strains down at this end are basically zero. Thank you. Thank you. So I'll just take a couple of these out. And again, some more of the conditioner, the mild phosphoric acid, and just kind of wet the surface. And the first thing I'm going to do is scrub along the axis of the line first. I'm trying to get rid of all the, the black stuff that you see. You see it's being picked up. Put a lot of pressure down on it. And once I'm happy with that, I'll put a little bit more on it. And then I'll scrub the whole area. Did you bring that piece of glass? That. Glass. 
I know men's like, I wish you would have told me this before. <laughs> All right, so scrub it until these start to come up clean. It's a, this is a very mild phosphoric acid, so a lot of times it'll have a little bit of a grayish tint to it. But once you've scrubbed it a few times, you can throw that away and then take another gauze. And just kind of fold it, wipe across, and then take it, refold it. We're almost there. Ah, thank you. And then the last step is to, when you use conditioner, since it is an acid, it drops the pH down low. It's a very, very mild acid. It's mostly water. Um, but it drops the pH, and Embon 200 doesn't like to stick to that. So we have to bring the pH back up using the neutralizer. It's an ammonia-based uh, solution. So I'll just take it and pull that off. Try to slide over here on a drier section and then just use a few drops. I probably use a little bit more than others, but get it nice and wet. Take two of these and then scrub it. And by this time, it should be nice and clean. If it's not, you probably missed a step somewhere along the way. All right, so once I'm happy with that, I'll throw those away. Another gauze pad and dry it up. And take and refold it. Yeah, thank you. And then basically it's, that part is ready. So what we're gonna do now is get our work surface cleaned, uh, which will be this piece of glass. Uh, I'll take a couple of drops of neutralizer, put it on it, and then take a gauze pad and just kind of wipe it off. Glass is good to use for two reasons. One, you can turn it into light and tell whether or not it's got dust or dirt or contamination. And any little piece of dust on this that could get on the backside of your strain gauge is a problem. So you gotta make sure you're working on a clean uh, surface. The other nice thing about glass is that it's non-porous. You know, some plastics, if you were to put stuff on it, it'll leach into the plastic and it comes back out later on. This, that won't happen. So we got the glass cleaned. Uh, the next thing to do is to find some strain gauges. Will you, um, so I'm gonna take that gauge out of that and throw that away. So this is our um, pre-coated, pre-cabled strain gauge that we're gonna use. This one happens to be a 125 UW. So it has a gauge length of about three millimeters. Uh, it's also 120 ohm resistance. And if you look kind of closely at it, you'll be able to see those alignment marks that I talked about before. So I'll try to use these triangular alignment marks. You can actually see it better on the bottom. Uh, I'll use these tri triangular alignment marks to get it in position on the surface of the, uh, of the aluminum beam. Now to do that, what I'm gonna do is take this and lay it out in front of me. And what I find sometimes is that it's a little bit easier to um, see if I can get this off. I'll just pull this down. I'll put a little bit of tension on it. Sometimes it's a little bit easier if you take a little piece of tape and use it to hold the wires down. So I'm just going to cut a little short piece of it. I'll just use that, I'll just tack it right there, just temporarily. And now what I'm gonna do is take this, the rest of this tape, it's already got a nice little handle on the end of it, and what I'm gonna do is lay it over top of this gauge, like this. I'll just put another little handle right there. Just fold it back over like that. So now, what this allows me to do is to be able to pick this strain gauge up 
without having to uh, touch it. That little temporary piece of tape, I'll just take it off and throw that away. And now basically we're ready to transfer it off of here and put it onto the beam and get it in the right spot. And when you do this, you want to lift the tape up and as you do it, lift it at a shallow angle. You don't want to pick it straight up because you start to bend the gauge. So I'll pick it up at a shallow, I try not to go past about 45 degrees. So this is too much. I try to keep it about right there. But once I get it on up, then I'll go ahead and pick it up and move it. And I'll take the glass and move that out of the way. Slide the beam over. And this is where I'm going to take it and try to position it right over top. Right over top of that burnished alignment mark. So now it's taped in place. Now it's taped in place. What are we missing? The adhesive. So the idea here is that what we're going to do is we're going to lift the tape and therefore exposing the bonding side of the gauge and that'll allow us to apply the adhesive and then we'll push it back down. And I find also that doing this type of installation with the coating on it and the wires on it you, you probably need to put a little bit more adhesive on it than what you normally would. I usually put a little bit more on it because we've got a bigger surface area and I want to make sure I get the adhesive to flow underneath the whole thing. So, we've got our M-Bond 200. That's the M-Code A. M-Bond 200 is here. And that comes with the catalyst and the, uh, and the adhesive. And what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to lift this tape and try to tack it down a little bit and then pull it back a little bit like that. So what I'm trying to do is expose the bonding side of the strain gauge and the surface of the part. And one of the differences here is that we'll have a tendency to um, put the adhesive more in the area where the gauge is going to be bonded on the part. And I'll show you what I mean. Um, this is the catalyst. This helps to serve as a control for this. Most of this is alcohol. It's like 98% alcohol. It's 2% catalyst. And what that means is that you want to give it time for the alcohol to evaporate. So first off, the way to do that is to minimize how much you put on in the, in the first place. So I'll touch it on the inside part of the bottle. We usually say 10 or 12 times. I'll do that and then I'll kind of wipe it in place. And if you see that it blushes the surface, that's good. That's all you need. And now you need to wait a, a minute. And if you find that you put it on a little bit heavy, you probably need to give it a little bit longer than a minute. Like if you put it on and you can tell that it's blue, Normally, I'd give it maybe two to three minutes. But now you wait until the, the alcohol flashes off and it leaves behind the catalyst. And while we're waiting, we'll go ahead and open up the adhesive. And I'm going to trim the tip of the bottle off like that. And what I like to do, once you trim it off, I like to squeeze out whatever little bit of adhesive is kind of in that little nozzle. I don't know, I guess it's uh, just something that we've kind of always done. So I'll squeeze that out and that makes sure you're getting fresh adhesive from the, from the bottle. Now the other thing about this type of adhesive system is that it likes to absorb moisture. If you ever, you ever see a, a, a cyanoacrylate adhesive that, that turns colors, that's that moisture contamination and it loses its reactivity as it absorbs more and more moisture. So what you want to do is keep the cap on it. So whenever you're using it, always keep the cap on it. Take the cap off right before you're getting ready to use it. Once you're finished, make sure you put the cap back on it. Um, <clears throat> so we've waited more than a minute. And the, and the tricky part here is that I'm going to apply adhesive right along this edge about right here. 
So as I start to push this thing back over, I can make sure I get a fresh layer of adhesive that flows out underneath the gauge. And the other thing that I like to do with these pre-cabled strain gauges like this and the ones that have the coating on it is to keep my thumb pressure on it longer than normal. Usually on a, a gauge without wires on it, we go for one minute. And I found with these, with, with the leads on it, it's probably good to go ahead and give it an extra minute. So usually I'll hold my thumb over top of it for two minutes. Um, but that being said, I'm going to take a gauze pad and I'll just fold it and I'll have it kind of ready. And then I'm going to take the adhesive. I'm going to apply more than I normally would, like that. And I'm going to take this tape. As long as we try not to wrinkle the tape, we can get the adhesive to flow underneath the gauge. And you've you got to put some pressure on it to make sure it flows up underneath it. But once it flows underneath it, now you want to get your thumb on it and hold it on there for two minutes. So I'm at, currently it's uh, 10.33 in Raleigh oh, at night. Yeah, right. <laughs> so now we hold it and wait a minute. A lot of times too, I'll kind of wipe off the excess around the tape. Um, just, you'll get a little bit of adhesive that builds up around the wires and stuff. I'm going to hold it. I think it might not have went it down as straight as I wanted, but we'll take the tape off. So right now we're at 45 seconds. So I'm going to wait two minutes and then I'll take the tape off. Actually, I'm going to wait two minutes and then normally we suggest waiting an additional two minutes and then take the tape off. At this point, it's like watching grass grow. <laughs> or like watching golf. Golf is popular in Korea, right? Isn't it? A little bit? We went past a golf, golf. course. Golf. 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 It is very popular. Okay. I like to play. I'm not very good, but I like to try. Golf is sometimes hard to watch on TV though. <laughs> All right, now sometimes you'll find that you will glue your finger down. The edge of mine is actually stuck on the beam. When you put more adhesive on it, that's one of the things that happens. But let me show you a little simple way to, to get unstuck. Um, a lot of times folks will try to pull straight up, and it's very strong. But if you take your thumb and you just twist it like that, it releases. So what I'm going to do is let this sit for another two minutes. It moved a little bit, and that's one of the things you have to ask yourself when you glue the gauge down. Once you get it installed, you have to do an optical inspection. And one of the things you're looking for is alignment. How good of a job did we get it aligned? Is it in the right spot? Uh, this one turned just a little bit as I was wiping it down, but for this purpose, it'll be fine. So we let it sit another two minutes, and then we can, uh, then we can test it. 